Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5e. How do you use Thieves Tools in Dungeons and Dragons 5e? Thieves Tools are one of the most common tools used by adventurers to pick locks and disable traps. With the guidance offered from the official Dungeons and Dragons 5e supplements and the sage advice, how do players and dungeon masters apply Thieves Tools to their games? These are the questions we're going to answer. Proficiency with Thieves Tools lets you add your proficiency bonus to your ability check to disarm traps or open locks. Proficiency with Thieves Tools grants you general knowledge of traps and locks. That could mean that Dungeon Masters don't need to require a dice roll for general knowledge, such as a DC5 or DC10 check, which is very easy or easy. Thieves tools include a small set of files, a set of lock picks, a small mirror mounted to a metal handle, a set of narrow bladed scissors, and a pair of pliers. Can locks be picked with a dagger or something else other than thieves tools? Probably not, as a dagger and other items would not fit into the lock. The exception might be a giant lock. It might be possible to cut through a set of manacle chains with a file depending on the thickness of that chain if you can't pick the lock. Do you need to look around corners without being shot by arrows or spells or avoid the Medusa's gaze? Then your mirror on a handle has you covered. You have insight into historical knowledge on locations renowned for traps. Which means a dungeon master can give you advantage on a knowledge check allow players to apply their proficiency bonus to a history check, or not require any dice rolling whatsoever. A famous location for traps would be something like the Tomb of Horrors. Investigation and perception checks gain additional benefits when searching for traps, because you have learned a variety of common signs that betray the trap's presence and how they operate. Dungeon masters can give advantage to perception checks or investigation checks, Add proficiency bonuses to the check or ignore the dice roll for a low DC check such as a 5 or a 10. Thieves tools allow player characters to set a trap as part of a short rest with items they have on hand that make sense. The total of your skill check to set the trap becomes the difficulty class for someone else to attempt to discover or disable that trap. There is no stipulation on what skill or ability check is used when setting a trap and it's completely up to the dungeon master to decide what is going to make sense. The trap deals damage appropriate to the materials used in crafting it, which means use common sense. The trap deals damage equal to half the total of the skill check to set the trap or whatever the dungeon master deems appropriate. Traps can be disabled with a set of thieves tools provided the character can reach the mechanical components of that trap. Locked doors can be picked with a successful dexterity check requiring thieves tools and proficiency with those thieves tools. It would follow that all locks require these three conditions to pick a lock. Well that's what you would think, unfortunately Sage Advice contradicts the Dungeon Master Guide if you look on page 103 of the Dungeon Master Guide under Locked Doors you'll actually see that this is going to be contradicted by Sage Advice. Jeremy Crawford has stated that a character doesn't have to be proficient with thieves tools to use a tool or to try and pick all locks. Only those locks that require thieves tools are required to actually pick that lock. Mike Mills has also stated that Dungeon Masters can make a ruling that characters that don't have Thieves Tools can't make a lock picking check, or apply disadvantage to that check if they want to. Now bear in mind this is only on social media and Twitter, and not necessarily going to be definitive. The Dungeons and Dragons 5e Sage Advice Compendium offers no advice or details on Thieves Tools unfortunately. The difficulty class for picking a lock varies depending on a lock's complexity, size, design, age and corrosion. Here are some sample DCs or difficulty classes for picking a lock. DC5 is a basic lock and an untrained individual can try and pick or open this lock and it's not really worth actually making a dice roll for. DC10 is a simple lock with no tumbler or with an internal hook system. DC15 is a typical lock with a tumbler system. 
DC20 is an elaborate lock that has a tumbler or locking bars or some other mechanical feature. DC25 is a master worked lock made of hardened metal and has an anti-lock picking feature. DC30 is a series of master worked locks that operate together. The difficulty class for disabling a trap varies depending on a trap's complexity, size, age, design, corrosion and even type. Here are a few sample DCs or difficulty classes for disabling a trap. DC5 is a basic trap designed to capture a victim and not injure them. Basic traps are able to be disabled by an untrained individual. DC10 is a simple trap that can be jammed or the cables cut if there are cables in it. DC15 I'm going to leave out because I don't think there's anything that's suitable for that. DC20 is a trap of average complexity. Refer to the Dungeon Master's Guide and to Xanathar's Guide to everything for details on what an average trap might be. DC25 is a complex trap. Again, refer to the Dungeon Master's Guide and Xanathar's Guide to everything for what a complex trap might be. DC30 is a multi-component complex trap. What happens if a player's character fails to pick a lock or disable a trap? Dungeon Masters do not need to allow for player characters to attempt again another lock picking check or another attempt at disabling a trap, but they could if they wanted to. If you're not able to pick a lock and open a door, players it's time to force the door or lock open with a crowbar or just smash the door with something. If you can't disable a trap, sometimes it's time to just destroy the trap, avoid the trap or trigger the trap and stay clear. Reference books for Thieves Tools Xanathar's Guide to Everything on page 84 The Player's Handbook on pages 154 and page 176 through to 178 The Dungeon Master's Guide on page 103 through to 104 Now if you found this video useful, fantastic, I have a more detailed live stream that covers Thieves Tools if you are interested. If you would like to watch more of my videos you can, I have hundreds of videos for players and dungeon masters that cover every aspect of Dungeons and Dragons and 5e. If you want to support the channel so I keep doing video content like this you can through Patreon, the Amazon affiliate links down in the description, the merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos or just watch my videos that's fine too. Do all the usual YouTube things like share, like and subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and I go live every week and hey till next time. Keep rolling those 20s.